Visual Studio 1714 just launched and is the biggest release of Visual Studio to date. Not only did it have tons of brand new features and optimizations, but brand new to GitHub Copilot is Agent Mode. That's right, Agent Mode has landed inside of Visual Studio and MCP server support is here as well. Today, I wanna to show you everything you need to know about Agent Mode and how to set up and get started with MCP servers inside of Visual Studio 2022 version 1714. So let's get into it. Okay, let's get into it. So this is my tiny shop application is done at Aspire and the Blazor front end here is supposed to list some products, but it says under construction. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. So first and foremost, we want to see that, yeah, there is a Blazor front end here and some Razor files. And we can see that it says just under construction. It's not even calling anything. So it just says, you know, blank products, basically. If we go into the product service in the front end, what we'll see is that there is uh, just one method called get products and it's not actually doing anything right now. So that's interesting. It does have an HTTP client, but you know, that's about it. So there's that, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, if we go into the front end project here, we can open up the product endpoints and there's going to be all of the endpoints for the project. And we can see there is one, so that's really good. Uh, and you know, maybe we could have some more here, but it is talking to a database. So that's cool. All right. So let's go ahead and enable agent mode. So you want to go into your tools options and under github copilot enable agent mode in the chat pane so that's what you need to do then when we go down over here we'll see there's ask an agent so you now have a bunch of models that you can pick from and you can full-on go into ask mode or into this agent mode that will do a bunch of stuff for you such as work across all of your projects and also self-heal so it'll go off and fix any problems that it may have as well and it can do things like install nuggets and run commands and a lot more so let's update the back end here and implement a full CRUD operations. And then let's implement the front end. And I wanted to also use the product services as the in-between to call those back ends. So I'm going to tell it to update it here. And I can use that hashtag pound symbol here to go ahead and reference other files. Now, it probably would have been smart enough to do it itself, but I'm going to tell it because I know I wanted to do it. So the agent mode goes to work and it starts to look at the entire project and understand the files and says, yeah, here's what I need to do. I need to update the back end, the front end, and the UI as well. And it's going to start searching code, looking for potential errors, looking for implementation details in the project, and it's going to get to work. So it's created the plan and it just starts to do it. So we can actually see it in real time writing the code for the back end endpoints here and all of the gets and the posts going on here. There we go. And this one right now is just using GPT-4.1. But yeah, that looks pretty solid to me. You can click on the file and you can get the side-by-side -side view of what has actually changed there, which is nice. And here's the service code. So we can see the service code has implemented a whole bunch of things for us. It's even added a private read-only HTTP client, so that's nice. And then we have all the methods that are calling our backends too. And it's implemented the front end, but notice right here that it's actually run the project it's looking for errors in the files that it created and it can cr help fix those problems if there are any now also note that it actually just did an entire build of the project too and that's really important because agent mode is able to run those commands so let's go ahead and build the project and let's see what it looks like now uh, so this is actually pretty cool right it just implemented back end front end and the in-between service for me all automatically so here we go back into down and aspire launching the front end here. And if I go into products, sure enough, boom, there are all my products in a nice table. Looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. Well, let's see what else we can do here because agent mode is pretty powerful. If I'm building on this actual application, I probably wanted to do a lot more. So here's my list of products here. Let's see what else we have. Oh, it actually implemented like, you know, if you don't have any, that's nice. And made that call to the product service and injected it. There's that code for the services. That looks pretty good. So it's just going off. And one thing that I'll note here is that I have some Copilot custom instructions that are telling you some things like what the project is and what maybe miscellaneous things to look at or ignore. So let's go back over and let's ask it to add a button that I can click on to go to the details and implement that entire details page as well. So I'm not giving it really any context at all besides go and create a details page and figure it out for me what it will look like. But sure enough, it's going to go off. It's going to analyze the different files that are available, including those custom instructions. 
put together a plan to implement the button, and then it's going to use navigation to navigate to the product ID. So it's set up here our navigation manager. It's added a button on it. That looks great. And then it's going to look for the product details. So there isn't one. So it's trying to get the file, doesn't see it, creates it for us automatically. Boom. One shot, there's everything for us that we need. Uh, and it's going to go ahead again, build the project, make sure there's no errors in any of the code that it generated, and then it will be good to go. And again, like I said, the other things it can do are like install NuGet packages, it can run build commands, it can do a whole lot more as well uh, if you're adding even larger pieces of functionality or starting from scratch. Okay, let's go into our store project one more time over here. Let's see what we get. We get our products over here. Click on details, and boom, we're on our details, and it's in a nice little card as well. Absolutely delightful. So now we have all that capability ready to go. Now you can also attach other different items too. So the solution, files, classes, and you can even upload an image as well. So a whole bunch of things that you can do here. And you can use that pound sign to reference things directly. And of course, you can do other things such as select the tools that you want it to execute. And more on that in a second. All right, so that's agent mode inside of Visual Studio, but there is tons more packed into agent mode with GitHub Copilot. So make sure you update and start exploring today. Now, let's talk about MCP servers. Now, you may have seen some of my videos here on the channel talking about how to get MCP server set up in VS Code or how to build your very own in C Sharp. Now, the question is, what is an MCP server? Well, it's model context protocol servers. That's what MCP servers are. You can think of them as a universal adapter for LLMs. Now, what does that mean? Well, think of USB-C as a universal adapter, right? You can plug different peripherals in, USB-C into your computer, you're good to go. That is what MCP is. It's a protocol to help provide context to models. You have these different clients like GitHub Copilot that are hosted in hosts like Visual Studio or VS Code. And what it's doing is those clients like GitHub Copilot are connecting to these MCP servers to query different contexts or even take action on your behalf. And what I mean by that is that you can have, for example, a Postgres MCP server that is talking to your database to help provide schema, for example. You could talk to Figma to query designs and pull them down that you can then provide that context into GPT 4.1 or into Claude, for example. You could even connect it to GitHub itself to help you query your issues, create comments for you. I recently used it to actually think of how do I implement OAuth inside of my application? Do I use Entra ID? Do I use EasyAuth? What do I do? I ask GitHub Copilot to go create an issue and understand all of the context of my application, go figure out what the trade-offs are between those two approaches and create a GitHub issue for me automatically so I don't have to leave my flow. So let's go ahead and get started with MCP servers inside of Visual Studio. All right, I'm inside my monkey application and I wanna get to work. So I'm gonna head to GitHub Copilot chat and I'm gonna switch to agent mode. And realize that agent mode can call these different tools. Some are built in, some come from extensions, and some of them are MCP servers. So here are 10 of 49. So 10 of them are actually from GitHub Copilot itself. And then are the other ones are ones that I've configured, this monkey and GitHub MCP. So they're the ones that GitHub Copilot have. So what about these other ones that are unselected currently? Well, if I go to my solution items and open the mcp.json, this is a JSON configuration of my MCP servers for this project. Here I have GitHub. This is going to allow me to do things like get issues, read issues, create comments, do a bunch of things on my GitHub with my personal access token, which is an input, so it's hidden here. Then I also have this monkey MCP, which is one that I created that allows me to get a bunch of monkeys, which is going to be very helpful for this application, as you could imagine. Now, this file can be put directly into the .vs folder. It can also be put into the .vs code folder, which is where mine is at, because I open this in VS Code often. And then you can also put it directly in the root, which is nice too. And now that has to be a dot mcp.json. So there's a dot in front of it. You can also put it into a folder even higher up and I'll put links to documentation. So let's turn on these tools. So now everything is available and let's just start asking it questions. So for example, let me get open issues for this repo. So it's gonna go off, it's gonna use my personal access token and it's gonna go 
and ask me if I want to run this command. And I'm going to say, yeah, allow this time. Now, this is calling those Docker containers that are running, and it's a running functionality and getting information directly from GitHub. Now, I would also like to use the monkey MCP server here to get a list of my monkeys. So it's going to go off, reach into that tool, and it's going to go get a list of monkeys back for me. So here it says, yeah, this, there's a list of monkeys here. It has name, location, description. You know, do you want the code for .NET MAUI? Well, I don't want it yet. Like, like show me what it is. So visualize those monkeys here in a list just so I can see them. And this would be great if you were connecting to a database, for example, and here's all my information of my monkeys. So this is pretty nice. And maybe I'm not ready to implement this just yet. So I'm going to ask it how I would go about implementing, you know, a monkey feature in this application. And then what I want it to do, which is really powerful, is provide this context. So it has the entire context of this chat. And I want to create a new comment on that issue. So again, it knows that there's one issue there. So go create a comment that describes how to implement it in this project. So this gives it the context of my application of the MCP server for the monkeys, which would be the data I'm connecting to. And it's going to go off and I'm going to allow it to create that issue on GitHub for me. So if I go over into my GitHub issues, open it up, sure enough, boom, there it is. It gives me all the information that I need to implement that feature later on. And I can be creative. So let's say I wanted to, you know, create a new camera control in this application, for example, and I wanted to take a photo of a monkey. I have no idea how I'd implement that today. When I want to use the context of my project and the knowledge here, in this case of GPT-4.1, the model I selected, to help me basically spec that out and create a new GitHub issue for me. So it's going to go off, put together that plan. It's going to ask me to create that issue. So again, it's prompting me here. Now, I can also allow it all the time or allow in this solution. I'm just going to do allow this time because it's nice for demos. And it's going to go off, go back into my monkey app vibes, go into issues. And there it is, add a camera control. And it gives me detailed information of how to do that. I could work back and forth. I could plan things out. And then, of course, I could ask it for even more details. But now at this point, I have this entire context of the monkey MCP server, right, to get those monkeys. So with that information, I can then tell it to go do an entire implementation of all of the data that's coming in. So this is really powerful, right? Not only just looking to see what issues I need to go implement or what are up for grabs, information that's inside of them, updating that information going off, connecting to my data source in case uh, here, the monkeys. And now I'm telling the agent mode to go implement everything for me. And there's no files here. So it's looking for all the files that it needs to create in this project. And in combination with those MCP servers, providing that additional context and data, this agent mode is now going to put together that entire plan of everything that it needs to implement. And here it goes. We got our monkey. We got our monkey services that are being created for us to talk to our data source based on that specific JSON coming back, our view models, and our user interface as well coming in. Again, combining that power of giving it additional context that's relevant to help me implement the feature that I wanted to do. And that's the combination of MCP servers and agent mode together. There you have it, agent mode and MCP servers in the latest version of Visual Studio 1714. Go get the latest updates and turn it on in the settings and start exploring. Hopefully this guide has helped you not only understand how to get started with GitHub Copilot agent mode in Visual Studio, but also some of the other features that it can do for you, such as MCP servers that can provide the additional context and also take action on your behalf too, which is super awesome. Anyways, there's so much more in store. If you have any questions, leave them below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell and share it with a friend as well. And thanks for watching.